line in the felony complaint says that Freddie Lee Trone met with someone outside Roscoe's just moments after PNB Rock and his girlfriend arrived. Trone is then seen leaving, but he returns shortly. This time, he's with his 17-year-old son, who was reportedly armed with a gun. Trone drops him off a short distance away from Roscoe's. The teen then walks into the restaurant and goes straight to the table where the rapper and his girlfriend were eating pointing a gun at them, prosecutors allege, and saying, quote, give me all of your jewelry now. The timeline then has the teen shooting PNB in the chest, just like that. And after he fell to the ground, prosecutors say the teen shot him two more times in the back. The felony complaint goes on to say the teenager then pointed that gun at PNB's girlfriend, Steph, saying, quote, show me your hands, give me that blank right now. I swear to God, I I shoot you in the head. The teen then took her jewelry, but it didn't end there. The complaint went on to say that as the rapper lay dying on the floor, the teenager robbed him too. Shout out to all the new subscribers. Shout out to all the old subscribers. And shout out to everybody that participated in the 5K sub giveaway that we did last night. Shout out to the winners, both one and two. Appreciate everybody that entered. You know, I think when we hit this 10K marker, I'm going to do another one of those giveaways. But I think maybe this time we might do like 500. You know what I mean? We did the $100 giveaway for the five. Maybe we maybe we bump that up. But I don't know. I'm going to think a little bit more about it. But today's video we're going to get into is about PNB Rocks Killers. Because last week, PNB's Rocks uh, uh, Killers, their trial kicked off. And he really only has one real killer, right? The, the one that... The one that walked him down, the one that shot him in his back and took his chains off, and he was a juvenile. He was a 17-year-old kid when this happened in 2022, right? So being that he's a juvenile, um, he had a hearing on this Friday, and he was found incompetent to be able to stand trial. And when, that, when they say incompetent, that means he's not able to understand the court proceedings. And today's video, we're going to get into... What does that actually mean for, for the 17-year-old killer? But other than the 17-year-old killer, there's still two other grown men that are on trial and their trial is now ongoing and kicked off, I believe on Thursday of last week. And for these two men right here, one is the father of the 17-year-old kid and the other is, is a man that tipped off the father that the PNB Rock was actually at the Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles and gave pretty much gave him the drop and then ultimately they the trial are saying that the father sent his son in to go rob pnb rock he gave his son the, the pistol the whole nine but one thing that has emerged out of this trial as of recently that didn't really make mainstream news was that pnb rock did have a pistol on him at the time of his death which is very unfortunate and the the news reports are the, the court reports of saying that the pistol he had was in the in the small of his back that they couldn't they couldn't see it when they were doing CPR on him because ultimately that, that that's what the cop had to do CPR on him for like two to five minutes before the paramedics got there didn't notice it but it's unfortunate though because you know P and B Rock was sitting there eating with his girlfriend and the whole time he had a pistol on him right there you know he had, he had, and and that's probably the reason why he felt so comfortable being able to go to one of these hood spots he felt like shit got my jewels on got me a pistol everything gonna be kosher if there's anything that trip I'm gonna handle that shit and bro never even got to his pistol and for me you know the P and B Rock shit kind of hit a little bit closer to me because I, I did some work with P and B Rock back in 2018 uh, when he was in Denver. He did some promo for one of my businesses, and he was a cool cat though. P and B was was a, but usually when you're dealing with these rappers and these motherfucking entertainers, a lot of them be having their nose in the air and they be weirdos and they got like they've got funny energy. You feel me? But P and B Rock was a was whole time every, even motherfuckers in his crew. He was he was solid though. He was a cool cat. He was a, he was a he was a real motherfucking person. You feel me? And he, he showed a lot of love. He did some good promo for me, and I'm, I'm, I'm forever thankful for, for what he did for me, for doing that drop. But when I, when I heard the news and, you know, ultimately seen the video, because, I mean, we all seen the video of P&B Rock laying on the ground, taking his last breath. You know, that some shit I never get out of my head, and it's fucked up that 
you know, we can turn on Instagram, we can load our phones up and, you know, we can just witness death so easy. You know, the, the man's death, his last breaths were, you know, were, were sent out to the world for the world to see forever. He was just to witness this man dying and taking his last breaths all, all behind his chains, all behind his jewelry, all behind a broke motherfucker thinking it was a quick come up. You know, and it's crazy because, you know, we, we're watching now the PNB rock, not the PNB rock, but the Pop Smoke shit, right? We see Pop Smoke's killer. He done got off. The motherfuckers be doing interviews. Now he's gaining notoriety. It's just a matter of time before the motherfucker drop an album. Now he's going to be a rapper, right? He a rapper he, and he going to gain all his fame off the back of the death of Pop Smoke. And then if the cat that killed PNB rock, if, if he ultimately beats the case and gets out, uh, you know, he can come out and get a gang of fame right there, too. I mean, these two motherfuckers might as well form a group right here. You know what I mean? The two motherfuckers that in off two motherfucking rappers, they might as well just be a motherfucking group. You know, I, I know Adam 22 probably waiting for this motherfucker to beat the case so he can get the interview. He waiting on that shit. Adam over there rubbing his hands together like Birdman right now waiting on that. But will the juvenile that killed PNB Rock really get off and get out to the streets? We're going to talk about that in this video and go over some case law and what that really means. So let's go ahead and break break that down real quick. So the reports say that on Friday, the alleged shooter was receiving a range of services while in custody. But an expert recommendation said that he still lacked the necessary competency to follow a criminal proceeding. Quote unquote, the recommendation is that the previous orders remain. Quote, Commissioner Bradford said the proceedings remain suspended and remediation continues. A follow up hearing for the juvenile was set next month. So when they say services, what are the services? So third services could be like therapeutic mental health type of programs that are, you know, ultimately designed to help him get a greater understanding and you know a lot of people think this means that he's going to get off right that's what everybody thinks they say he's not mentally uh, competent so he's the case is going to get dismissed but that's not exactly what's going to happen since these are felony these aren't misdemeanors the only way in california and i've read the case law and we'll go over some of that case law here shortly but the only way he could get the case dismissed if these were misdemeanor crimes so ultimately what they're going to do is they're going to give him another hearing and they're going to do these services and give him these mental health therapeutic uh, programs to see if they can get him up to par to be competent to be able to actually stand trial for these crimes. For me to give you guys the greatest understanding of what's really going to happen with this, this trial for this juvenile killer, we have to read the case law. So let's jump into that real quick. So case law for a lot of people is very complicated. They don't like reading it. You know, you read legal legal jargon, it'd be all over the place. And, you know, they, 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 say, they say a whole lot of shit for it to mean something so small. You know, they use all these big words and everything. But to break it down, basically what it says is a minor is incompetent for purposes if the minor lacks sufficient present ability to consult with counsel and assist in preparing his defense with a reasonable degree of rational understanding or if he lacks a rationale as well as factual understanding of the nature of the charges or the proceedings against them. Incompetency may result from presence of any condition or conditions including but not limited to mental illness, mental disorder, developmental disability, or uh, Im immaturity. So it says further here though, if the minor is found to be incompetent and the petition contains only misdemeanor offenses, the petition shall be dismissed. But that's not the case because ultimately, PNB Rock's killer is is is, an, is a felony charge, though. Fel you know that's a, that's murder. So upon finding of incompetency, the court shall refer the minor to services designated to help the minor attain competency. Unless the court finds that the competency cannot be achieved within within the foreseeable future, the court may also refer the minor to treatment services to assist in remedy that may include but not limited to mental health services, treatment for trauma, medically supervised medication, beho behavioral counseling, uh, legal based legal educational services or training and socialization skills consistent with laws requiring consent. 
Service providers and evaluations shall adhere to standards stated in this section in the California Rule Code, blah, blah, blah. Services shall be provided by least restrictive environments consistent with public safety as determined by the court. A finding of incompetency alone shall not be the basis for secure confinement. Uh, so, uh, so he, he could he could get he could get on a on a on an ankle monitor. He could get a get a bail or something of that sense, but I don't think that falls under having the murder charge that even gives him the option right there. I don't know what his bond is even set at. I feel like he, maybe he doesn't have a bond, but the minor shall be returned to the court at earliest possible date. The court shall review remediation services at least every 30 calendar days for minors in custody and every 45 calendar days for minors out of custody prior to expiration of the total remediation period specified in paragraph three of the subdivision. So every 30 days, they could keep bringing this guy back and forth, right? They could keep bringing him back and forth. This could be something that drags on and drags on and drags on. Will it? I don't know. It also says, the court shall consider appropriate alternatives to juvenile hall confinement, including but not limited to all the following. A, placement through regional centers, B, short-term residential therapeutic programs, C, crisis residential programs, D, civil commitment, E, foster care, relative placement, or other non-secure placement, F, other residential treatment programs, 2, the court may make any orders necessary to assist with the delivery of remediation services in an alternative setting to secure confinement. So it goes further on to say, if the court finds the minor has been remediated, the court shall reinstate the proceedings. That means that he will be tried as, as, as the case should have been without him being found uh, incompetent. And then it says, if the court finds the minor has not yet been remediated, but is likely to be remediated within six months, the court shall order the minor to return to the remediation program. However, the total remediation period shall not exceed one year from the findings of incompetency and secure confinement and shall not exceed the limits specified in the subparagraph. So basically he has a, a year's window right here to have to be remedied in the competency, be, to be found competent in some way. He can go back and forth every 30 days for competency hearings to see if, if he's competent or not. He has up to a year and go through these services that the court will provide to see if they can bring him up to par to be competent. Now, it goes further to say, if the court finds the minor will not achieve competency within six months, the court shall dismiss the petition. The court may invite persons and agencies with information about the minor, including but not limited to the minor and the minor's attorney, the probation department, parents, guardians, or relative caregivers, mental health treatment professionals, the public guardians, and has a long list of other people and all that good stuff right there, to the dismissal hearing to discuss any services that may be available to the minor after jurisdiction is terminated. If appropriate, the court shall refer the minor to, for evaluation pursuant to article and it goes in. In a nutshell, to break all that down after reading all that stuff right there, basically the court now can come back every 30 days with the competency hearing and give this, 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 this kid some kind of service, mental health service, mental health treatment, evaluations to see if they can get them up to par to be able to understand the court proceedings and all that good stuff right there. And if they can find that within six months that these services can bring him up to par, he will proceed and continue to go right there. But if within these hearings they find within six months that they cannot bring him up to be competent as 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 need be to be able to stand trial, then the the case will get dismissed. But ultimately, he will either be referred to a mental health uh, service or some kind of you know treatment center or anything like that. And, and they'll, they'll they'll have a hearing on that at the dismissal hearing. That will basically choose which direction and for how long they put him in something like that right there because. At some point, you know, I mean, you know, there's there's something he's not he's not just getting out today. Basically, he's not going to be out in, at, at any time in the next like 30 days or nothing. But, you know, the way courts work and the way lawyers work is they're going to file motions on this stuff right here and try to try to get it dropped down, try to plead it out or something like that. In my opinion, that's what I think will happen. I think somewhere, you know, but to think that he might actually get out, though, I guess it could be a possibility. But, you know, 
it's, it's crazy to think though that, you know, cause that, that's the name of the game. When I've been locked up before, I, I done seen people, you know, uh, smear peanut butter in their ass and all kinds of stuff and act like they crazy. And they, their whole aim is to go to the state hospital, but what they don't be realizing instead of going to the pen, they gonna go to the state hospital with all these fucking weirdos and people that they stuck there for an indefinite amount of time. And in a sense, you know, that's kind of where this cat is going, but being that it's a juvenile, kind of throws it off and you know with the cat being 17 right he was 17 in 2022 so that would make him 19 now so he's not a juvenile right now and i don't know why but i, I guess because you know that's when he when he caught the case you know that's then they charge him then they charge him as a juvenile so you know that piece kind of throws me off there too because you think now that he's an adult though they, he might be standing trial as an adult but i guess not but y'all tell me what y'all think down there in them comments right there after going through all that case law and hearing all that stuff what do y'all really think is gonna happen to PNB Rock's juvenile killer right here? Will he ever will he ever have to serve any real time behind the actual murder of it? We already seen that the mother took a plea deal, right? She took a plea deal and her stuff is already, she's already, you know, good to go. And the only ones that's still waiting to actually do some time is probably gonna be the father and the guy that tipped the father off. But will the juvenile killer actually do some time? It's gonna be interesting to see what happens, but I'm gonna keep y'all updated as the case progresses. Y'all let me know y'all comments down there. And if y'all made it this far in the, in the video, good Lord, just hit your boy with a like so I can get an algorithm. We can get this thing out. We keep growing this channel and all that good stuff. But uh, shit, to the next video, y'all, I'm out.